The Johnson's Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, Jean Carroll, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. Now that the weather's warmer, naturally, your doors and windows are apt to be open while you work in the kitchen. Well, that brings up a little cleaning problem, because dirt and dampness do come in to soil your kitchen linoleum. Of course, it isn't a problem if you have Johnson's Glow Coat on your floors. You just whisk away the dirt and moisture with a cloth, and right away your linoleum comes up bright and beautiful. That's just one of the many nice things about Johnson's Glow Coat. Not only gives your linoleum a really bright shine, makes the colors clear and fresh... It also forms a tough, protective wax film that wards off dirt and spill things. Try it, won't you? Ask for Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, the floor finish that gives a really bright shine. When it comes to spring cleaning, Mrs. McGee of 79 Wistful Vista has enough energy for two people. And we do mean Fibber McGee and Molly. Raise your feet, dearie. I want to clean under the Davenport. It ain't dirty under there. I, I looked a minute ago and I dropped my cigar. Well, dust accumulates, you know. Come on now. Up with the tootsies. No, oh, why don't you do the other side of the room first? I have done the other side. And incidentally, when you practice putting in the dining room, please don't leave your golf balls on the floor. Oh, don't worry about them, kiddo. I can find them again, all right. <laughs> I'm not worried about your losing them, but I stepped on one a couple of hours ago and twisted my ankle. What? You did? My gosh, baby, why didn't you say so? That's terrible. Here, lie down here and give it a rest. Oh, no, no, it's all right. I just mentioned it because... Come on, come on, come on. Get off of that foot, Snooky. A twisted ankle is nothing to monkey but with. But, McGee, it isn't really any... Come on, don't argue with old Dr. McGee now, precious. I didn't get a merit badge for first aid just for picking chiggers off the scoutmaster. <laughs> here. Lie down. Of all the silly... Let me put this pillow under the ankle. Which one is it? Well, I don't remember now. It was just a temporary... I'll put a pillow under each one of them, then. I'll take no chances. Oh, my. There we are. Now, then. Where's the hot water bottle? Where's the ice bag? Where's the iodine? Where's Lena? Here I am, Mr. McGee. (laughs) And I got a book right here that tells just what to do until the doctor gets here and finds out you've done everything wrong. This isn't serious, Lena. It's just... Believe me, this little book come in awful handy the day my little brother sat on the hornet. <laughs> my gosh, Lena, your kid brother sat on a hornet? That's what he said, Mr. McGee, and I asked him, did it hurt much? And he laughed at me and said, no, it was a dead hornet. Oh. And that's when the book come in so handy. Huh? I hit him so hard over the head with it, he has to part his hair between Simon and Schuster. <laughs> But now, Lena, this isn't any... Look up any... sprained ankles in there quick, Lena. We can't let this thing go neglected. Oh, no, I should say not. Sure. You know, I remember one time my sister was going to pierce her ears for earrings, uh-huh. and the doctor book says to be sure everything was sterilized, so my sister boiled her ears for 15 minutes. <laughs> Come on, Lena, come on, come on. Here, let me take that book. I'll find it. All right, sir. You'll find it in there, all right, because last year when Uncle William got the old pneumonia... Uh, pneumonia, Lena. Oh, no, he had it before, honey. And, <laughs> you know, Uncle William was always... Here it is. Sprains. What to do? Elevate the injured joint in a comfortable position. It is comfortable, McGee. In fact, there isn't even anything... Place wrong. pillows or folded coat under the victim's colic in young babies is sometimes caused by swallowing air while nursing and... Hey, Lena, there's five pages missing out of here. Oh, those must be the pages I tore out and mailed to Cousin Herman, Mr. McGee. Huh? You see, he had his eye on his thigh once. You mean he had his thigh on his eye? <laughs> no, he was buying a pig pen and he got bit by a sow. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
Yes. And he knew pigs were awful skeptic, you know, and he didn't want a uh, confection to set uh-huh. in, so I sent him some some vice. Now, never mind all that, Lena. Never mind. Get, get me the hot water bottle and the ice pack. We can't just stand here and do something. We got to talk. Yeah. I mean, we got to... We can't... Yes, sir, ain't that the truth? I'll sure. get him right away, Mr. McGee. Hmm. But just let's not get all excited. As the fella in the French Revolution says when he's seen him putting up the guillotine, let's all try to keep our heads... <laughs> oh, I ain't got nobody. <laughs> How's it feel now, Molly? You in much pain? Can I get you some aspirin? A drink of water? Please now, dearie. I don't want a thing. My ankle doesn't hurt a bit, really. Ah, uh, that's a bad sign, kiddo. It's numb. I better call Doc Gamble. No, 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 for goodness sakes. I tell you, I'm perfectly all right. And I have so much work to do, I simply can't lie here Relax and... now, baby, relax. I'll do the work. Don't you stir a muscle. First thing I'll do is finish vacuuming in here. <laughs> no, now, McGee, I'd rather... I'll get it. What was that? I ran the vacuum over my key ring (laughs) Must have fell on the floor while I was sitting on the sofa Oh, well, I'll fix that later What'll I do now, Snooky? Dust a little? Oh, no No, never mind, pet I'll do it Just let me get up No, 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 no You mustn't move Don't put any weight on that ankle I'll just dust the table and chairs and dust McGee, don't dust with your handkerchief No, it ain't one of my good ones My good ones are all in... Whoops, oh. I knocked the lamp over. <laughs> uh, but don't you worry, baby. I'll get the hang of it. I'll... Hey, where's Lena with that hot water bottle? Don't she know where we keep it? Do you? No, I don't. Oh, yes, I do, too. It's right here in the hall. Huh? No, McGee, that's one of the things I have to clean out okay. when I... in the orchestra and waltz in swing time. I finish wiping these ashtrays, I'll take down the draperies and wash the curtains, Molly. Then I'll wax the picture frames and windowsills, glow coat the kitchen linoleum, and how does your ankle feel now? It feels fine, but I feel so silly lying here on the couch when there's absolutely nothing wrong with me. My goodness, me. What do you mean, nothing wrong? I simply mean that my ankle is perfectly all right. You take my word for it, kiddo. A sprained ankle can be pretty serious. I knew a guy once sprained his ankle and limped so bad on it he threw his sacro almanac out of joint. You don't mean almanac, you mean iliac. Oh, no, I don't. Iliac is an island in Lake Superior. Good fishing up there, too. I remember one no, time... No, 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 that's Mackinac. 
Oh, you're mistaken, my dear. A Mackinac is a guy that fixes motors, and it's pronounced mechanic. <laughs> it's from the Indian word mekohanica, meaning grease all over steering wheel. That may be, sweetheart, but I still maintain the word you mean is sacroiliac. What did I say? You said sacro-almanac. Hmm? An almanac is a book that tells you the best time to plant your corn. <laughs> I don't need an almanac for that. <laughs> I plant mine every Tuesday night. just about this. <laughs> now, you stay perfectly quiet till Doc Gamble Oh, McGee, here. you didn't really call Dr. Gamble. Oh, I sure did, baby. I take no chances with things like this. He said he'd be here as soon as he could, and for you not to move around anymore. But I'm not hurt. I merely told you I'd stepped on one of your golf balls. Oh, forget it, Snooky. What's a 35-cent golf ball when your ankle is at stake? <laughs> now, you tell me what you want done around here, and I'll do it. Well, I was going to darn some of your socks. I'll darn the socks. I did it before I was married by George, and I can still do it. Yeah. <laughs> I know how you did it, too. Huh? You puckered the cloth up around the hole, tied a string around it, and pounded the lump down with a hammer. <laughs> So what? After all, I was just a kid then. Uh oh, there's good old Doc. Probably left some guy in agony on the operating table just so he could rush over here and look at your ankle. He a real humanitarian. Oh, dear. Now, if you'd only listen come to in, me, Come in, come in. Hi, Chillin. How's every little thing? Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Lower your voice to a bellow, will you, Junior? <laughs> this is a sick room. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Yeah. But now that you mention it, pal, you do look pretty horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Something you ate? I am not sick. It's Molly. Really? You never know how to look at her? Nothing serious, I hope, Molly. Oh, I never felt better in my life, Mr. Wilcox, but you know how McGee is. He runs for an ambulance if your heels get run over. <laughs> Don't you let her kid you, Junior. She sprained her ankle and she's just being brave about it. <laughs> Nonsense. I told you all along there wasn't... So any... I put her right to bed here on the Davenport, called Doc Gamble, and took over the housework myself. Well, that ought to put her back on her feet again, if only in self-defense. Mm -hmm. Anything I can do to help? No, thank you, Mr. Wilcox. I'll be up and around in no time. And if As a can... matter of fact, Junior, I... I did have one question. Uh -huh. Step out here in the kitchen a minute, will you? Sure. Excuse us, Molly. Certainly, boys. Take your time. This way, Harlow. What's on your mind, pal? It's about this stuff you use for uh, kitchen linoleum, Junie. This, uh, this, uh... Cement? No, 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 no. You, you know, I, I've heard you mention it, I think. <laughs> you know, the stuff everybody uses to keep it shiny and clean and new looking. Oh, glow coat. Johnson self polishing glow coat. That's it. That's the stuff. Got any on you? Sure, sure. I got a lot of it out in my car. I'll be right back. Is this the back door? Yeah, just okay. Right. <laughs> Always keep it where I can get at it. <laughs> You're the first jet propelled salesman I ever saw, boy. <laughs> Uh, how do you use this here, uh, Glockamora? Uh, glow coat. Glow, oh, yeah. <laughs> Johnson self-polishing glow coat. Yeah, yeah. How do you use it? Well, gee, didn't I ever tell you? I'd have sworn I'd mentioned it around here. Oh, you know how I am, kid. In one ear and out the other. <laughs> you, uh, you just pour it out, do you? Yeah, like this, see? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's about enough. You mean you just make a kind of a little puddle with it? No, no, no. You spread it around with a long-handled applier. Oh, here. Here's one. Here. Right here. Swell. Now watch. Mm -hmm. Just spread it around evenly like this. No work at all. Oh, I get it. Then you wait a few hours for it to dry. No, no, silly. It dries in 20 minutes or less. No kidding. Absolutely. Then you go to work and rub it and buff it, eh? Of course not. Not, not with Johnson's glow coat. It shines as it dries. Oh. No rubbing, no buffing. Look, it's drying already. See that beautiful gleaming surface? Yeah, say, that looks... Hey, hey, you missed one little place under the stove there. Where? That... Oh, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, I got it. Fine. Hey, see, pal, that's all there is to it. Uh -huh. Now the linoleum is protected against dampness and footprints, and you can wipe spill things up with a damp cloth. My gosh, that's wonderful. Well, I'm certainly glad I found out about this stuff, Junior. Thanks for the demonstration. Well, I got to get back and take care of Molly. I'll come with you. Uh, no. I glow-coated myself up against the back door. I'll go out this way. See you later, pal. Okay, Waxy. Funny. I felt sure I'd told him about glow coat before. What's so amusing, McGee? Mr. Wilcox gone? Yeah, and you know what? I just Tom Sawyered him into glow coat in the kitchen linoleum. 
<laughs> I pretended I'd never heard of it. I ain't that a panic. <laughs> I'm just doubled up with laughter. Well, don't do that. You've got to stay quiet till Doc Gamble gets here. <laughs> this is so silly, McGee. I've got too much to do. Whatever it is, I'll do it. Now, let me see. I'll start taking down the draperies. I better get a ladder, so... Come in. Hello, Fizzard. Hello, QB. Well, heavenly days, Mr. DePopolis. Uh, Nick DePopolis. Hi, Nick, old man. I haven't seen you for a long, long time. Come on in. Thank you. Quite a bit. Well, <laughs> how are your wife and all the children, Mr. DePopolis? Oh, everybody is in good shape, QP. Except my little girl, Sophie. She won't have a good shape till she stops eating so much ice cream and peanut brutal. <laughs> Riddle. The way she eats it is brutal. <laughs> I haven't seen your oldest boy around lately, Mr. DePopolis. You know, the big handsome one? Oh, Demetrios. No, Demetrios, he's a lieutenant in the Maroon Corps. <laughs> I'm very proud of Demetrios. He's the best oldest son I ever had. The lieutenant in the Marine Corps, eh? You gotta be pretty good to be a shave tail with that outfit, Nick. You said so. <laughs> Demetrios has got more muscles in his little finger than I ever had in my whole head. <laughs> He's with flying machines. A bomba darling. <laughs> a bomba deer? Deer, darling, any way they love him. <laughs> How many children you got, Nick, old man? Well, now, let me see. Starting with the ones in long pants, there is Demetrios, Agathakis, Costa, Ulysses, Chilios, George, and Sophie. Uh, Sophie? I thought you said they were starting with the ones in long... She wears slacks. Oh. <laughs> You got a new baby, too, haven't you, Nick? Oh, sure. A cute little squeegee, too. Yeah? Last night, I'm sitting on the edge of his cribbage and telling him all about Snow White and the Seven Midgets. Oh, that's a good thing. Oh, name. that kid, he's loving it. Is that so? When I come to the part where little red riding breeches chops down the beanstalk <laughs> so Jack the Killer Diller can rescue Cinderella and Simple Simon, he's asleep like a wink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid you have that story a little mixed up, Mr. DePopolis. Oh, what's the difference? He's just a little baby, and you know how little babies are. They like a change now and then. <laughs> well, good to see me back some more, Fizzer. So long, Cupid. So long. Kingsman and Casey Jones. Come on, your rounders, if you want to hear the story all about a brave engineer. Casey Jones was the rounder's name. On a high right wheeler, he won his fame. Casey was leaving at the stroke of four. He kissed his wife at the station door. Mounted to the cabin with his orders in his hands, ready to start for the promised land. Casey Jones mounted to the cabin. Casey Jones, orders in his hand. Casey Jones, Casey Jones, Casey Jones, what do you say? Open that throttle and start on your way. Off the junction on the fly, Casey had that look in his eye. You can tell by the engine's moan. That's Casey Jones. You're a-running too fast You ran through the signal Last station passed But Casey says I'll run her Till she leaves the rail Cause I gotta get to Frisco 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 With the western mail Look out, Casey Freight train up ahead Look out, Casey Jump or you'll be dead Headaches and hearts and all kinds of pain You'll find them all in the railroad game Stories of brave men, noble and grand Belong to the life of a railroad man Casey Jones going out to Frisco. Casey Jones orders in his hand. Casey Jones, Casey Jones, Casey Jones. Hallelujah! Finally went west to the promise.
McGee, what on earth are you doing now? I was just cleaning the mirror in the hall, kiddo. Slipped out of my hand. That other noise you heard a minute ago was when I stuck the broom handle through the wall plaster. I can fix that up with some plaster paris, so don't worry about that. I can get that. Dearie, fixed. now, I've been lying on this sofa for not more than 20 minutes, and you've practically wrecked the house already. I'm going to get up and finish the cleaning myself. Oh, no, you don't, baby. You've got to lie still. Doc Gamble says so. He'll be here any minute. But now. I don't need it, doctor. My ankle is all right. I'll you be... You don't know it's all right till Doc sees it. Now, you just stay... Ah, here he is now. Come in, come in, sawbones. What did you call me, McGee? Huh? Oh, hi, Latrivia. He was expecting Dr. Gamble, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, Molly's got a twisted ankle. I've been trying to keep her from moving around on it. Oh, a sprained ankle can be pretty bad. Uh Are you sure you know how to take care of it till the doctor gets here? Do I know how to take care of it, he says. (laughs) A guy with Indian blood like I'm a guy with can make medicine out of roots and herbs if necessary. (laughs) I see. You have Indian blood? Practically. One of my uncles was a whatapotomy. Potawatomy, McGee. Oh, yeah, you should have seen the tummy on him. <laughs> no Potawatomy ever had a pot like my Whatapotomy, Uncle. <laughs> Incidentally, His Honor, you ever have a bad sprain? <laughs> Indeed, I have. At a very inconvenient time, too. What do you mean, kid? Well, it was several years ago in England. Mm-hmm. I was to escort my mother, who was to be presented at court. Oh, and on... how terrible. On what charge, Your Honor? I beg your pardon? What was she being jugged for, boy? (laughs) Nothing serious, I hope. She was not being jugged, as you so vulgarly put it. Don't you know what being presented at court means? Oh, he certainly does, Mr. Mayor. (laughs) Remember the time he got sued for refusing to pay for those encyclopedias, dearie? Yeah, they were no good. I went all through the seas trying to find kill a cycle and all through the caves looking for cucumbers and they weren't there. <laughs> it was a jit. But how'd your mother come out, boy? Acquitted, of course. How could she be acquitted? She wasn't charged with anything. This was the Royal Court of England. I hear that's the hardest place in the world to beat a rap, too. <laughs> that's where the judges wear those long white wigs, isn't it? Yes, but this was not that kind of a court. I this hope you was... weren't chump enough to act as her lawyer, Latriv. Them prosecutors can tie you up like a peck of green apples. My advice would have been to you... I don't need your advice. Mm-hmm. This was not a court of law. This was at Buckingham Palace. Heavenly Ooh. days. They really took a right to headquarters, didn't they? <laughs> throw her into a dungeon, did they? Or lock her up in the tower? They didn't lock her into any dungeon or throw her into any tower. <laughs> I mean, this was not a log of metal. A lot of eagle. It was not a legal matter. You still haven't told us what she was in court about, Mr. Mayor. My goodness, it may have been just parking too long or driving on the right-hand side of the road. In England, you know, they drive Yes, that way. yes, I know. <laughs> now, let's get this clear. My mother was not guilty of any offense. She was in court to be introduced to their royal highnesses, the king and queen. Well, good for her, Latrev. I'll bet that impressed the judge. It's hard to get character witnesses as big as that. I'll bet he threw the case right out in the alley. I tell you, the cousin that he was. Huh? The Cass. Cass. Jay. <laughs> this was a matter of merely meeting the Fong and King. Well, you... Uh, the Queen and Kung of England. <laughs> I mean, the high royalness is... When you go to Buckingham Wheelbase, Bucking Pass Wheelbase, <laughs> Winging Puss Buckingham, Bucking Paddle Hammers, <laughs> Packers, I... You were the one to... I... I... <laughs> McGee? Yes? Did you ever consider going into politics? Yes, he has, Mr. Mayor. I often thought of being governor, Latrib, then maybe a senator and president. President, that is. What do you think I ought to run for? The next time I see you, your life. <laughs> never did find out how long a sentence his mother got. No, oh, I'd ask him. But I don't like to ask him. Probably don't want to talk about it. Well, I got to get busy, kiddo. First thing I'm going to do is move this piano so I can clean good behind it. Now, careful, dearie. One leg on it is a little bit... A little what? A little weak. Oh. Look, uh, pet. Yeah? 
Will you let the cleaning go, please? As soon as Dr. Gamble sees my ankle, he'll know what to do. Oh, good, this must be him. Come in. Hello, Molly. Hello, Sonny Boy. Hello, Doctor. Nice to see you. It's about time you got here, fatso. What have you been stalling around for? Sneak over at the public library to look up the treatment for sprained ankles? Calm yourself, my boy. You only called me a half hour ago. I was on my... Well, what's been going on here, anyway? Broken glass, piano wrecked, lamp broken. <laughs> Looks like Powers Elephants have been holding a square dance. <laughs> now, himself here was doing some house cleaning, Doctor. Cleaning? Never mind that, Doctor. You get busy and take a look at my wife's ankle. All right. And I must say, it's the pleasantest assignment I've had all week. <laughs> oh, Doctor. <laughs> Come on, come on, come on. Never mind the sulficide manner, Dr. Hirschholt. <laughs> Get with the treatment. And if this delay has any ill effects, by George, I'll sue you till... Hush, dearie. Freeze is over. <laughs> Where does it hurt, Molly? It doesn't. Uh, which foot is it? I haven't the slightest idea. No pain at all? None. Mm-hmm. No tenderness here? Right here? No. Is that bad, Doc? It says in what to do till the doctor comes that the absence of pain is not necessary. Be quiet, you... Okay. My dear, this is worse than I thought. Aha, you see? What did I tell you? No, what do you mean, Doctor? Now look, there's only one answer for this. Yeah. 24 hours in bed. What? Lock the door if necessary. 24 hours, no less. 24 hours. My very words, Molly. Come on. I'll help you upstairs. No. Huh? Not her. You. Huh? You go to bed and stay there for 24 hours. What? It's the only way this woman can get any peace and quiet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Doctor. I'm kind of tired at that. <laughs> Fibber and Molly return in just a moment. While you're struggling through your spring cleaning, don't forget what a wonderful help Johnson's Cream Wax can be. This newest Johnson's Wax was especially made to clean and polish your furniture and woodwork. And believe me, it does an outstanding job. Take a cloth and rub a little of this creamy white liquid on the most soiled part of your woodwork, preferably where there are dirty fingerprints. You'll be delighted with what happens. You see, besides genuine Johnson's Wax, Cream Wax contains two effective cleansing ingredients. They whisk away those fingerprints and soil spots instantly. And with just a light polishing, Johnson's Cream Wax leaves a really beautiful, lustrous wax finish. This hard, smooth wax gives protection against future soiling, makes dusting easy. Johnson's Cream Wax fills a real need, not only to give your furniture and woodwork sparkling beauty, but also for your white kitchen equipment. Why not get some? You'll like it. Johnson's Cream Wax. Ladies and gentlemen, a very alarming shortage of nurses has forced the closing of whole floors in some of our hospitals at a time when every single bed is badly needed. In passing up a nursing career, young women are passing up one of the most satisfactory of all professions. Opportunities for advancement are good, salaries and working conditions are continually improving, and no other job offers so much downright self-satisfaction as a nursing career. You young women between 18 and 35, give it some thought. Check with your nearest hospital for information on how to apply for entrance to a school of nursing. A nurse has a professional status which the world respects and admires. Good night. Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.